Peskin note for this uh, scientific congress, who is Dr. Sylvia Diganas from the World Health Organization's Afro office. Uh, she's an accomplished obstetrician gynecologist and public health physician with a lot of experience in safe motherhood and in other reproductive health issues. Uh, who has worked in various capacities in Ghana and uh, she has also worked with the WHO. Uh, working with the WHO is a consultant now. Uh, your profile is quite long, so I am not able to read all of that. Um, she was not able to be with us. Uh, she had asked to present virtually, and then we said we might have network challenges. Uh, so let's have a representative who's local. Uh, so to present on your behalf is um, Ms. Zrana uh, Kastole, who's an epidemiologist who works with um, the World Health Organization Zimbabwe office is a national professional officer focusing on reproductive, maternal, neonatal, uh, adolescent, and child health. And she's going to be delivering the keynote speech titled um, MPDSRA Overview in the African Region and the Role of Professional Af uh, Associations. Uh, Ms. Tolle, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, good morning, colleagues. Um, I'm not going to introduce myself. I'll just go straight to the keynote speech, just to save time. So I'm going to present on behalf of um, Dr. Sylvia, and I'm going to present on the MPDSR overview in the Africa region and the role of professional associations. And this is going to be the presentation outline. So by way of introduction, uh, MPDSR, Maternal Perinatal Death Surveillance System, is a quality improvement intervention, and it allows us to identify the maternal deaths, the perinatal deaths, the stillbirth, and also notify those deaths, quantify the deaths, and determine the causes of those deaths, and also the avoidability. And um, the ultimate goal will be of orienting the measures necessary for their prevention. So the MPDSR, it requires the robust maternal and perinatal death identification and review system. And of course, it requires a strong leadership, the local leadership and training. Evidence has shown that um, the MPDSR system reduces the number of maternal deaths by 35% if well implemented, and also reduces the perinatal death by 30%. So I think it's a very effective tool or intervention to use. So there are some key milestones to the MPDSR. In 2010, the maternal death notification became mandatory, and this, is, uh, this was through the fifth 15th AEU summit that was conducted, and this was followed by the introduction of the um, guideline document on the ICDMM in 2012, and of course with the adoption of the MPDSR strategy in 2013. And also in 2016, there was the introduction of the ICD-10 PM, the perinatal mortality, um, and also there was an establishment of the two-year regional service on MPDSR. So the first one was conducted in 2014, followed by the second one in 2016, 2018, and in 2020, WHO could not conduct one because of COVID-19, but rather it was conducted in 2021. So many countries in general in Africa have adopted the MPDR strategy as a means of acceleration, accelerating the prevention of the deaths, the perinatal and the maternal. And countries are at different stages of implementation. And from these surveys that I've alluded to, uh, numerous challenges have been cited by the countries, but they are almost the same across the countries. So the current state of implementation of the MPDSR according to the SRM and CAH policy survey of 2018-2019 shows that all countries within our region 
uh, have adopted the guidelines, the policies around the notification of the maternal deaths within 24 hours. And um, about 70% of the countries have also um, adopted the national policies, the guidelines or the laws around the um, review of the newborns. But however, less than 50% of the countries have the policies around reviewing of the stillbirths. And South Africa, Malawi, Eswatini, Lesotho, Rwanda, Namibia, Uganda, and Kenya are some of the countries that are implementing the um, confidential inquiry into maternal death system of review. And I know Zimbabwe, we are not yet uh, conducting the, the CEMD. And this is, this figure shows the availability of the national MPDSR policies and guidelines are based on the survey of 2018-2019. As you can see there, I think the, the wording is not feasible, but the first slide should be showing um, the availability of the national guidelines around the notification of the maternal deaths within 24 hours. And you can see globally, that's the first um, column there. And the second column is African region. So generally we are doing well as Africa in terms of notifying, having the policies around notification of the deaths, maternal deaths within 24 hours. And also at global level, we are doing well. But when it comes to the policies around um, reviewing of the neonatals and the stillbirths, we are not doing well. That is the third section of columns there and the fourth one. Unfortunately, I don't have a pointer there. So you can see that the perinatal notification and review is not doing well. However, um, in terms of having the guiding documents, the policies or the laws around that area. Um, this shows the overview of the MPDS that are core components implementation status uh, based on WHO African region uh, survey that was conducted in 2018 and we got the responses from 42 countries. So the components included the notification, the review, of the maternal deaths, as well as the availability of the functional review committee, um, the availability of the national MPDSR guidelines and tools, and the um, availability of the costed plan, the annual reports, and the monitoring system. So you can see of these components, we are not doing well as Africa in terms of having the MDSR costed plan and in terms of having the annual report and in terms of monitoring the MPDSR system. There is also a review of 23 um, MPDSR country reports that was conducted in 2022. So from these reports, the reports, they varied in terms of scope and content. But we noted that um, there are four countries, Ghana, Rwanda, Ethiopia, and Liberia, that have the MPTSR data integrated into the program performance um, uh, reports. And also these reports, they ranged from 2016 to 2021, and the frequency of uh, release of the reports varied also across the countries. Some were producing the reports annually, some after every two years, some after every three years. But we do have South Africa, which was consistently producing the annual reports um, every year. And one of the reports that were reviewed in 2022 was their sixth report in line. And also we noted that 22% of these reports that were reviewed did not include data on perinatal deaths. And it means the P component on the MPDSR system was lagging behind and was a bit weaker than the um, MDSR. With regards to the notification and review rates of maternal deaths, um, 16 countries were um, assessed, 
uh, and the death notification average rate was 46.3%. And Zimbabwe, I don't have a pointer, but I hope you can see where Zimbabwe is, is slightly above 40%. And South Africa is doing well, uh, around 90% there. And when it comes to the um, review of the maternal deaths, the average uh, rate was 59%. And unfortunately for Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe did not provide data on the maternal death review. But as, as you can see, uh, the highest was uh, South Africa there. And this slide shows the leading causes of maternal death. Across the countries, the two major leading causes were obstetric hemorrhage and hypertensive diseases of pregnancy. And these two only, uh, contributed to more than 50% of all the maternal deaths. And here we can see Zimbabwe, we are also having the challenges of these two um, um, conditions. So with regards to the three delays, things have changed a little bit. We used to know that the first delay was the big elephant in the house, but unfortunately, delay three in orange there is also a big challenge across the countries, and it's also equally affecting uh, Zimbabwe. And with regards to the perinatal notification and review rates, generally they are low, and um, 11 countries where the reports from 11 countries were analyzed and the perinatal death notification average rate was 11.7. And Zimbabwe is there, it's quite low, and Uganda is doing better, but in general, it's low across the countries. And unfortunately, for the um, perinatal death reviews, reviewed in 20, in from the 14 countries, the average rate was 18.5, and unfortunately, Zimbabwe could not provide data uh, on perinatal death reviewed. So we could not compare Zimbabwe with other countries, but generally it's on the weaker side uh, across the countries. So um, the perinatal death reviews that were also conducted in 10 countries um, showed a range of 0.1% uh, in Senegal to 32.5% 32 in Mozambique. So there are also countries that were reviewing uh, the neonatal deaths alone, countries like Benin, Ethiopia, Mozambique, and Zimbabwe, and they were not reviewing the stillbirths. But we do have countries that were also reviewing the stillbirths but not reviewing the neonatal uh, deaths, uh, countries like Sierra Leone. And um, Burundi, Uganda, Mali, Benin, Zanzibar, and Rwanda were closely applying the ICD-10 PM criteria. And across the countries, the leading causes of death were asphyxia, premature, and uh, infection. And these are the same with Zimbabwe as well. And uh, the cited barriers and facilitators to successful MPDSR implementation were almost the same across the countries. And some of the barriers there, I'm not going to dwell much on them, they are almost the same with the Zimbabwe barriers. The inadequate knowledge and skills, the fear to blame, the failure to implement recommendations, poor documentation, burnout, inadequate leadership, and the facilitators included uh, the involvement, the engagement of health workers, different cadres uh, in the MPDSR process, the elimination of blame, strengthened leadership, and implementation of recommendations. So what's the takeaway message from this available data and the country reports on MPDSR in Zimbabwe? So with regards to readiness to implementation of the system, uh, generally, the notification and review policies are in place in all the countries. In East and Southern Africa, the committees are well established. They meet regularly. In West and Southern Africa, the committees are not well established and they don't meet frequently. And um, with regards to the actual implementation of the system, the countries, they continue to rely on the partner funding and the technical support. And the challenges are the same across the countries. 
And there are some areas that require attention according to the assessment that were done. Areas around the MPTSR data uh, collection and analysis, and also the inclusion of the MPTSR data into the existing uh, systems. For Zimbabwe, we have the DHIS2. So those are the challenges. That data is not there in the uh, current uh, DHIS2 that we are using. The annual reporting, the monitoring of the systems, as well as the mechanism, the feedback mechanism to disseminate and the share findings from the system is also an area that needs attention across the countries. So what's the role of the health professional, the health professional associations in this MPDSR? To provide leadership. We all know that for this system to function, it has to function well in settings with a strong culture of accountability. So it is the role of the associations to foster the culture of accountability. And I can give you an example of the International Configuration of Midwives. In 2018, they participated in the development of the WHO guidelines on MPDSR. We do have um, the FIGO, the um, International Federation of the Gynecologist Committee. They also participated they advocate for the implementation of MPDSR globally. And we also have the IPA for the pediatricians. They, you know, they, they, they um, hosted a webinar on neonatal care in 2020, and that was focusing on what went well and how we can make it better. And also with regards to other roles of the health professional associations, they have to strengthen the organizational structures and the standard operating procedures for the MPDSR system through defining the roles of the committees, committees um, the roles of the committee members, uh, participating in the development of the guiding documents, and also providing mentorship and training to the members of the associations. And with regards to supporting the notification and review of the dates, we strongly encourage the associations to build capacity of its members, whether pre-qualification, in-service, on correct certification of maternal and perinatal death, and ICD, MM, and PM. I know we have people who are very passionate about this. The likes of Prof Munjanja, Dr. Makoni, they are very passionate about this. And we are currently using the ICD-10 in Zimbabwe, but WHO is recommending that we transition from ICD-10 to ICD-11. And also, uh, the capacity building could be around good clinical documentation and practices. As some of these audits are conducted, you will find that there will be no data. You can't follow through the steps taken. Um, and also to promote participation in MPDSR activities by linking the professional uh, advancements, e.g. the professional credits and CME points. And with regards to strengthening response, um, our, our plea is if the association can help to implement innovative evidence-based approaches, using some of the strategic positions they might have. Some might be the heads of the unit, and also to support the program evaluation, participate in the evaluation of the uh, MPDSR system. Um, so as health professional associations in Africa, we have work to do and targets to reach. We know by 2020, all countries should reduce MMR by at least two thirds of their 2010 baseline level, and no country should have the MMR greater than 140 per 100,000 life birth. That is a number twice the global uh, target. Our global target is 70 per 100,000. And as well, one of our target is to reduce the neonatal mortality to at least as low as 12 per 1,000 life birth. And Zimbabwe, as we stand, our neonatal mortality rate uh, is 32 per 1,000 life deaths. So we know what we must do. And I'm going to quote uh, Fatal, Prof. Fatala. He said, the Inconvenient truth is that women are not dying because of the diseases we cannot treat. They are dying because societies have yet to make the decision that their lives are worth saving. So, what's the take home message? All the professional organizations involved in maternal and newborn care have key roles to play in MPDSR. 
they must provide leadership and they must support all the stages of um, MPDS that are cycle. We know professional associations have powerful voices. They are well respected. So they are better positioned to ensure that the objectives of MPDS are, are achieved. Thank you very much. And I'll leave you with a slide with the links to resources on MPDSR. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, we are expecting the guest of honor any time now. So while we wait, uh, we will invite questions from the floor. Pandemic. And the reason I'm asking that was in South Africa, at a time where we really wanted to know what was happening to maternal deaths during COVID, all the people who would normally assess maternal deaths, provide the information, were busy as frontline workers or diverted to COVID wards or sick. And so it was actually quite difficult to keep it going. Um, I think we eventually caught up. And when we did catch up, we found that we had a you know, nearly 40% increase in maternal mortality for the two major years of the pandemic, which then um, thankfully went back to normal in 2022, um, normal being about 115. Um, but I just wanted to know if it was a similar experience in other countries, that all these processes did rather suffer, and whether we, in a way, what we do about having more resilient data collection systems. Thanks. The presenter. Uh, good, good morning. I'm Dr. Renga. Um, my question is to do with the um, response to the to the reports that will come out of the M MDC PR uh, uh, review. Um, what kind of structures do exist in other countries? Uh, for, uh, this is a question directed to the WU representative to respond to the reports or to the action points that come out of these reports. Because one of the weaknesses we have locally is that uh, we sit in these meetings or we, these reports are generated and same problems over years and years and years without any remedial action being done. So I would like to learn from other countries what kind of response teams or um, actions they take whenever they get these reports. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to answer the first question from Professor Sue Focus. She wanted to know what happened during the COVID uh, pandemic. And I think the meetings were definitely affected. There were fewer meetings at district level, at provincial level, and even the National Committee didn't meet every quarter as they are supposed to or as they were supposed to. Uh, they, there was definitely a blip in the maternal mortalities, so we will expect a, a small a small hike in the maternal mortality ratio. Let's hope that uh, it will come down. Uh, unfortunately, I think our systems are not as resilient as in South Africa. There hasn't been enough documentation or even much documentation about in numbers about what percentage increase there was in the maternal mortality ratio. But... Uh, at least we know that the preparations which were done for protecting the staff and the and the patients will be in place if there was if if there's a future problem. Uh, thank you, Prof. Janja, for the response. Uh, another question, right? 
Um, thank you very much, uh, and thanks, uh, Prof, for, for the question. I just wanted to say that a study funded by WHO was conducted uh, around December 2021, 2022, um, to look at the disruption in, you know, in essential services um, that occurred during, during COVID. Um, and indeed, the data was showing that neonatal mortality, this is DHIS 2 data, it was showing that, uh, uh, you know, neonatal mortality went up um, um, in hospital, this is institutional. It was also showing that uh, 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 perinatal mortality went up. It was showing that stillbirths in particular were uh, steeply, you know, there were a lot more stillbirths reported uh, during that uh, that period, um, I do have the graphs. Unfortunately, I, 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 I maybe I should have presented the data. I do I do have that data. Um, yeah, but uh, really, systems essential services were affected. What wasn't affected uh, was um, you know the programs related to TB, HIV, um, uh, and and so on that are heavily funded by Global Fund and other partners. Those services were not affected, but RMNCH was severely as affected during COVID. Over. All right. Thank you very much, and. Uh, I, th I also thank the, my colleague for the presentation. Just to add to the comments or the responses to Prof's question and of course to others. The COVID, there's no doubt that COVID actually affected some of these uh, indices that we are interested. There's a lot of data or reports that we can share on that across countries. But uh, what I wanted to add is even beyond COVID, there's a joint report by UNICEF and WHO plus other development partners that indicates that still birth within the sub-Saharan African region is increasing, moving from 0.72 million to 0 0.82, 0 0.77 million to 0 0.82 million. So beyond COVID, we are not doing so well there in the sub-Saharan African region. I am from Ghana, and we've done some studies just for Ghanaian context. We have implemented interventions meant to address access to care and other things. And yet, our perinatal mortality hasn't exactly improved, even beyond the interventions. So we still have a problem there. In Zimbabwe, we've looked at the data. And again, beyond COVID, if you look at perinatal mortality from 2014 to 2019, it is increasing. Maternal mortality is doing well, but perinatal mortality is not doing so well. We have put in a lot of efforts, yes, but we need to ask ourselves a lot more questions, like uh, I think I had a good question here about that. What are we not doing right? We keep working, we keep intervening, and still we are not so much getting what we want. I think we just need to ask one or two more critical questions. And then one of the concerns we have um, detected in Ghana, which in my conversation with one of the Zimbabwean clinicians, it also popped up, was um, we, we tend to have an impression, and this was reported in Ghana in a study that I was part of. Okay, if the mother dies, there's a problem, the media is interested and they pick it up. But if the baby dies, okay, three months, six month time, we can start another baby. You know, and it seemed to not draw our attention to that. And you can get that practically in the facility level when less attention is paid to still birth audits and perinatal audits. So maybe a little more attention would let us uh, make some gains. However, there has been some uh, positives in terms of maternal mortality, even in Zimbabwe. Uh, between 2018 and 2019, there was a dip 
which I'm told there were some few um, geographical issues here and there, but we're doing so well in that part. Thank you very much. All right, uh, thank you for your response. Uh, we had one question from Dr. Verenga, which required a response, uh, either from you, Janaka, or from you, say, in terms of the structures responsible in other African countries, once you get an MPDS or a report, what do you do and you know, what action is taken? Because our experience here is that we do have these MPDS or meetings, we have recommendations, we have no action. Thank you very much. So from the analysis that we conducted across the countries, it, it came out as well that recommendations are not fully implemented across the countries in, in Africa. And I don't know what exactly they are doing in other countries because um, I work for Zimbabwe. <laughs> but I know in Zimbabwe we have that challenge. I don't know if Dr. Sylvia is online. If she's online, maybe she can speak on behalf of other countries. But based on the reports that we assessed, it's a common problem across countries in Africa. Thank you. All right, uh, thank you for your response. We are moving forward with uh, our program in the interest of our time. Uh, Dr. Mashumbe.